CC brings something unique to gospel music. With CC, the sky's the limit. She just has that much power and that much grace. Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you. What makes CC so special is who she is as a person, what her value system is, her love for other people. Whatever she does, it's for the right reason, and that reason is to touch people. That's why I sing. My God. That's why I'm here today. Because of her style, her beauty, her poise, she's enabled gospel to cross over. So so Cece's gift was special. It truly was special, and it was from God. Anything she sets her mind to do, God honors because she honors him so much. As far back as I can remember, I, I used to sing. I remember singing probably just as much as I remember talking. Um, it was always a part of our home. We enjoyed singing, everybody sang, and we kind of figured everybody in the world's family sung. They just kind of fell into it and, and started doing their own thing, making up their own songs, learning to play their own instruments. When we talk about the Winans family, we talk about a family that has been inordinately popular, not just within the church realm or the gospel community. Pop took four of his older sons and created a successful quartet, the Winans. Within the, the family, we had two different groups. So Cece uh, and my brother Daniel and my brother Michael and myself sang in a group called The Winans Part Two. I never, I had never seen a family with all this talent. Kids were coming out of the walls. It was always a crowd. I mean, when you have 10 children in a three bedroom home, you have one full bathroom upstairs, you have one, a half bath downstairs. Now there's a place that's blessed. Now there's a place that's blessed. Where we find happiness. Never a dull moment. We had 10 kids, but they, when they bring their friends home, it was more like a community center. My mom had seven boys straight. And uh, it's funny when she tells the story how even though she was happy, she had a healthy child and a healthy pregnancy. Every time they told her it was a boy, you know, I guess probably after that third one, it's like, come on, it's a boy. So she said she would turn her head and just go to crying. And I felt like that was so sad. When I was in the delivery room, when the doctor told me a girl, I was kind of groggy. And, and then I, I think I asked him about six times, did you say a girl? You did say a girl. Seven boys, I had a ball team, you know, just about, just about, well, seven. When my daughter came, I was very much uh, rejoiced over that. I can even remember the time when they brought her home. I was like eight years old. And uh, uh, of course, I was used to my parents bringing babies home. <laughs> We had to teach them, you know, not to be so rough with the girl as they were with each other because you can imagine with seven boys, they were always roughhousing, wrestling and everything. So we had to kind of watch them for a while. Here's this baby now that's crying a little bit different, you know, and comes with a set of rules. <laughs> Whereas everybody else we could play with, tussle with, and all this kind of a it would have been, we would have been in so much trouble. They called us more or less strict. We were strict parents. We could not go to movies. We couldn't hear secular music. 
uh, not in the house, anyway. Uh, we could not wear makeup, the girls. Uh, we couldn't wear pants. Now, some of the rules came from the church, and then some just came from us being parents. And, and back then, we felt that children were children and parents were parents, and we didn't get them mixed up. <laughs> we were embarrassed. A little, because <laughs> everybody had pants on and, you know, they make up and we just had to come to school plain. And, and it's funny because you think back, and especially now that I'm a parent, you think back and say, how did they do it? How did they do it? How did they really discipline us, but yet we felt love? I didn't sing a lot in school. I was very you know, to myself, very quiet. I didn't like singing out front. Loved singing at home, you know, in the shower, you know, at, you know, whatever, with, with the group of people in the choir, you know, that was just activity for us to sing with the choir, but never really desired to be out front to do it. What changed? I realized that it was more than just a gift and realized that when I sang, it was more than just a voice. But it had something else on it. I saw what it did to people. I started feeling different as I sang, the more I sang. And I felt like I was becoming more of a tool, more of an instrument, more of a vessel to, to bring good news and to spread joy and peace. 